Hello and welcome to the Azure Stack HCI show. Hello, Manfred. How are you doing today? Hello, Sven. I'm doing fine. Hopefully my internet connection also. So we had some issues before we started. So, but actually it looks good from my side. Perfect. Yeah, two weeks ago, we announced the um, general availability of Azure Stack HCI in the version 23H2. And at the same time, we announced that an in-place upgrade from 22H2 to 23H2 is not available um, as of today. So we do not know exactly when it will be available some time in spring or early summer maybe so we do not know so in this session we want to focus on um, the question is there any alternative to migrate existing infrastructure to 23h2 without the microsoft in uh, um, um, in place upgrade opportunity and manfred prepared as always some demos and some slides to yeah, to show how it could work. So it's not an official in-place upgrade path, but it's a, an, um, a presentation about what you can do if you want to use 23H2 um, right now and you do not want to wait. And there are a lot of reasons why you should do that because 23H2 has a lot of benefits. And um, so I hand over to Manfred and I'm super curious about what you have prepared. Yeah, so it's it's only slides today because live demos would last too long for a full migration path. But I think we can cover the full story uh, of the actual available capabilities for the migration. Um, important is, uh, you mentioned this already, I would recommend to migrate to 23H2 as early as possible because 2020H2 is, let's say, the old Azure Stack HCI world. We don't have the Azure Arc resource bridge. We don't have the Azure portal-based VM management and all these cool new stuff. Um, but 2020H2 is still supported. So if you prefer to stay on this previous release, you are fine with this. If you are looking to move to 23H2, it's uh, the situation that the official migration path, as Sven mentioned, is announced for the next month, but it's not available for today. So the question is, which capabilities are available. And the first option would be, and this is one of my scenarios, if we look at my slides, is to really invest in new hardware. And this could be an option. This is my recommendation because regarding the hardware, we have new requirements in Azure Stack HCI 23H2. For example, we need a trusted platform module um, version two. If your existing hardware has already a trusted platform module, you are fine, you can use this. But with the new systems, you also have the latest CPUs, the latest storage and so on. Um, so you should absolutely think about investing in new hardware. If this is an option for you, you can choose from the Azure Stack HCI catalog. You can deploy a new Azure Stack HCI cluster via the portal. We discussed this already in one of our previous Azure Stack HCI shows. And if you have your old Azure Stack HCI cluster and your new Azure Stack HCI cluster, you can just use live migration to move virtual machines from the old cluster to the new cluster. Important, these VMs we move via live migration can run on Azure Stack HCI, but they are not Azure Arc enabled by default. The great thing in Azure Stack HCI 23H2 is that when we use the Azure portal-based VM deployment, that every virtual machine is already listed in the Azure portal, um, is registered in the Azure portal, can be ARC enabled if we choose this um, within the deployment wizard. These virtual machines that come from a previous Azure Stack HCI cluster to this latest version via live migration, 
are fully compatible with this new Azure Stack HCI version, but we need additional steps to register them in Azure. So this does not happen automatically today. Maybe there will be some changes in the future, but you have to keep in mind, if you want to have these virtual machines listed in the Azure portal, you need some additional steps. Regarding the migration itself, it's very easy because you know live migration, we don't have any downtime. It can be done with your running workload um, and we can move virtual machine by virtual machine from the previous cluster to the new cluster hardware. Mm, maybe you have something in mind about live migration that there are some limitations regarding Azure Stack HCI. This is the case if we have Hyper-V based on Windows Server. Hyper-V on Windows Server does not support live migration to Azure Stack HCI and vice versa, but between different Azure Stack HCI versions, a live migration would be fine. That's a super important information because guess, yesterday I got the question if live migration between Azure Stack HCI and Azure Stack HCI is possible, and now we have the answer, yes, it is. No limitation. Yep. Um, between Azure Stack HCI clusters and nodes. Perfect. Yeah, live migration between Azure Stack HCI and Azure is not possible. This is the most asked question I market. receive about this because many customers are thinking, oh, great, now I have a service on Azure. Can I live yeah. migrate from Azure Stack HCI to Azure? This is not possible today, um, but between Azure Stack HCI, live migration is possible. Between um, yeah, Hyper-V on Windows Server, it's possible. It's not possible from Azure Stack HCI to Azure and vice versa. And it's not possible from Hyper-V on Windows Server to Azure Stack HCI and vice versa. Okay, if you are thinking about using existing hardware, if you say, okay, this is an option, and maybe this is not the most expensive option when you see how easy it is. You buy new hardware, you deploy the new cluster, you live migrate your VMs, and then maybe you could reuse your existing hardware for other tasks or for another Azure Stack HCI cluster. This is very easy, very uncomplicated. It, ver it just works. Um, if you want to reuse your hardware, an option could be to use backup and restore. You could think about backing up your entire cluster reinstalling the whole cluster with Azure Stack HCI 23H2, and then restoring the virtual machines. This also works very fine because you don't have scenarios where you have to ensure that your uh, existing workload is still up and running and your new workload is already ready. You expect some downtime here because you back up your virtual machines, then you redeploy everything. As long as the redeployment takes, you have a downtime for your workload, and then you restore the virtual machines. This is possible if your existing hardware is compatible with Azure Stack HCI 23H2. Your CPU usually will be compatible. Your storage will be usually be compatible. Usually your network interface card, you have ins to ensure the, the trusted platform module version two, which is not default in every Azure Stack HCI cluster. This also works very good. You can reuse your hardware, but you have some downtime. When you think about the deployment, um, my experience is that the Azure Stack HCI deployment needs about one hour per node. So if you have a four node cluster, you should plan with four hours. And additionally, the preparation. So you have to work through the wizard, but you can um, yeah, pre-configure all these things so that you have this about one hour per node uh, for the deployment. So if you have a two node cluster and you already have deployment experience, you could plan with some downtime between two and four hours for your workload, yeah. It depends for sure on the amount of your data. As you know, um, the backup storage has some uh, performance values and you cannot restore the your VMs faster than the backup storage can deliver the, um, the virtual machines that are stored there. Regarding the workflow, very, very uncomplicated. An interesting option 
is available if you are running um, Azure Stack HCI 2020H2 on a single node configuration because exclusively exclusively for single node configurations in the wizard, we have the capability that within the deployment, we can choose use existing data drives. Important is that this is only supported um, with single node configurations. So you cannot use this if you have a two node or three node or four node Azure Stack HCI cluster. But if you have a single node Azure Stack HCI cluster, you could reinstall the um, OS on the node with 23H2. You could start the deployment and choose use existing data drives. And in this scenario, the Azure Stack HCI cluster will take your data from your existing storage pool, from your existing volumes, and um, yeah, bring this to your new single node Azure Stack HCI cluster. And as you maybe have already heard, a single node Azure Stack HCI can, cluster can be extended with a second, with a third node, and so on. So we can extend this cluster. Important is that we have to start with a single node cluster and to migrate it to a single node cluster. The so difference, does this mean, yeah. for example, if the customer has a two node cluster mm -hmm. and he disconnects one node yeah, and he configures the single node that is left as a single node cluster, is this possible? And then you can do the steps you described? Unfortunately not. I will describe the scenario with multi nodes and reusing hardware in the next section, I think so. Because okay. the issue is if you initially started with a two node cluster mm -hmm. and you remove one node, you still have the resiliency from the two node cluster, which is a two way mirror or a nested two way mirror, depends on what you have chosen when you deployed the 2020 H2 cluster. Um, and we don't have the fault domain disk but we have the fault domain server. And it's actually supported to move from a, the single node to a multi-node configuration. So we can move from um, yeah, fault domain disk where the redundancy is built via the local disks in one server. We can switch this to fault domain server where the redundancy is built across the servers. But it's not possible to go the way back to go from the fault domain servers to the fault domain disks. Maybe this is something we will see in the official migration path that this could be possible Today, this is not supported and my tests doing this were not successful. Um, so uh, the issue is that we initially started with a two, three, four node cluster and there we don't have the option to use this existing data drives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if we have a single node cluster, this is an option. The advantage is compared to the previous scenario, we don't need the time to back up the data and restore the data. My recommendation is to have a backup if, if something goes wrong. But as you know, the backup can be done via your workload is up and running. So you back up your data, then you, just for safety, it's not required, but you back up your data to have a fallback option. And then you reinstall the single node, you deploy the OS, and you choose within the deployment use existing data drives. The wizard says, oh, great, there's a pool, there are volumes, I will use them, there are virtual machines on them, I can use them. Uh, the important note is here, it's the original text from the documentation. Um, we have to create the infrastructure volumes. Um, Within the deployment, if we choose the default option, create workload volumes and required infrastructure volumes, we have everything we need for the uh, Azure Arc resource bridge, for storing um, virtual machine images, for storing virtual machines. This infrastructure volumes have to be created because they don't exist in this previous pool based on 2020H2 here. Okay, I assume that this part will be extended for the official migration 
um, wizard or tool or whatever it will be for the official migration path from 23 um, uh, from 2020 h2 to 23 h2 if we have a multi-node cluster and we want to reuse existing hardware it is also possible it's not documented documented in the docs at microsoft but it works so what you could do you could use your cluster in this scenario we have an azure stack hci 23 h2 uh, sorry 2020 h2 cluster so the um, previous version which is still supported um, it doesn't matter if it's a two node or three node or four node configuration I've chosen the two node configuration because with two nodes, this scenario starts to be a valid option. And then we will still keep the Azure Stack HCI 2020 H2 cluster and remove one node from the cluster. So we will remove one of the nodes from the cluster to use this node to install Azure Stack HCI 23H2 on this node and deploy a new cluster. This is important. We have a new cluster in this scenario. So we don't keep our cluster. So if the first cluster was cluster 01, the next cluster can be cluster 02, but not cluster 01. But because this old cluster has to exist till the virtual machines are migrated. So now we have a single node Azure Stack HCI 23H2 cluster, and we have a cluster with one, two, three remaining nodes from our um, old cluster. Now we have 2020H2 and 23H2, and we can use live migration or export import. So it depends on your workload, what you prefer, both is possible um, to bring virtual machines from the old cluster to the new cluster. This only works if we have enough resources on both sides. So the showstopper here could be that if I remove a node from the cluster that my remaining resources in the old cluster and the existing resources in the new cluster are not enough to keep the workload on both sides. So in this scenario, we have to yeah, uh, extend the storage capacity. We can add uh, memory and so on. Um, but if you work accordingly to the failover configuration in a two node cluster, you should have 50% resources free for failover purpose, and then it should work. OK. Hmm. Makes sense. Oh. Now the workload is moved to this new cluster and we have an old uh, single node Azure Stack HCI 2020H2 cluster without any workload on it. And then we can use this remaining node and install Azure Stack HCI 23H2 on this node. And we just install the operating system. Um, so only the operating system is installed, no cluster is can configured. Because now we can use the new 23H2 cluster, which started with server two, and add the node uh, with Azure Stack HCI 23H2, we reinstalled um, on the remaining server in this cluster. And as a final result, we have a new Azure Stack HCI 23H2 cluster. We reuse the hardware and we have the full workload on this new cluster. Important is, these are many manual steps here. There's no wizard for this. Um, the installation of the OS is manually, the deployment of the cluster is manually, the adding of a node is actually only available via PowerShell for Azure Stack HCI 23H2 and so on. But regarding the workflow, it works exactly as described here. Now it's your decision if you say, okay, I, I have the focus on reusing my existing hardware uh, or maybe it could be an option to invest in new hardware so I can save the steps of reinstalling nodes and removing nodes and adding nodes and just use the live migration between the clusters. Okay, does this here make sense? Removing the node, reinstalling, 
live migrating the workload is this do you think this is an option for the customers Sven? absolutely i think this is exactly what most of our customers will do and um i think you have uh, a, pe a presentation about a three or four node cluster as well I don't have this in this okay. uh, in this scenario because we have some additional scenarios of moving workloads from Hyper-V to Azure Stack HCI I will cover in the next steps. But if we have a three node cluster, we repeat uh, this step here several times because then I do it with the first no. node and then I will have the issue if I have a four node cluster, for example, I will not be able usually to move the complete workload to a new single node Azure Stack HCI cluster. So I will move part of the workload to the new cluster. Mm -hmm. and then I will remove the next node from the old cluster and um, reinstall it with the OS, add it to the new cluster and live migrate the next virtual machines and then the next node and so on. It works, mm -hmm. for example, in a four node configuration exactly uh, is described here when I have, um, again, 50% redundancy. So when I have 50% mm -hmm. of my capacity for failover, because then I could remove two servers from my existing cluster and build a new two node Azure Stack HCI 23H2 cluster. Then I could move the whole workload to this new cluster and then add the remaining two servers reinstall them with 23h2 and then add two servers to the new uh, cluster so if we have 50 percent capacity for redundancy we can move it in one step if i have larger clusters where i have the configuration the redundancy configuration that i have the capability to cover the failure of one node then i have to repeat the steps two and three several times um, to bring them node by node to the new cluster. Yeah. Well, I think that's clear. Okay. So it depends Who has on the an have, addition yeah. or question just to add the steps for having the VMs managed for Azure, create an empty VM and move the virtual hard disk over the, to the new VM. Uh, this is what, what I mentioned before. Important is if I do not deploy a virtual machine via the Azure portal, I can bring the workload to the new cluster, but it's not the same if I deploy a new virtual machine via Azure. Today, we don't have um, a final tool for fully covering the same steps that I have when I deploy a new virtual machine in Azure. I will introduce you something in a few minutes uh, via Azure Migrate where the virtual machines are listed in the Azure portal. And what Udo mentioned is correct. If I want to have the same, I have to create an empty virtual machine. And the important thing is to create this virtual machine from Azure, not locally, and add the existing hard disk. Then I have exactly the same I would have if I would have deployed the virtual machine from the Azure portal, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Um, and ah yeah I, I i i'm doing the same uh, pronouncing mistake i did last time sven mentioned this uh, already robert said i said several times 2020 h2 but it's instead uh, of 22 yeah yeah uh, 22 but we all know what so you sorry mean. for this yeah <laughs> but thank you for this uh, hit robert to clarify what we are talking about perfect Okay, so I assume that the official migration path will be um, yeah, very, very smooth transition from 23, uh, sorry, from 2020 H2 to 23 H2, uh, but the official version is 22 H2. 20, 22 H2, yes, sorry. <laughs> um, and, um, the official wording is that we will have it in in the next uh, in the next month. Uh, so we have here information that first customers will have a private preview 
um, exactly in the next month and it will be expanded to everyone over the course of the year. If you think the steps I described might be too complicated and you want to stay on your existing Azure Stack HCI version, important is that the support is still there um, till the official migration path is announced. And then I would expect that we have six months to migrate to um, the latest Azure Stack HCI version. 23H2 or maybe then already 24H2. So, but as you see, there are already capabilities to migrate to Azure Stack HCI 23H2 if you want to use the latest feature set, if you want to take advantage of these new things, if you want to avoid the disadvantage to deploy longer virtual machines via the old way where you used Hyper-V Manager or Failover Cluster Manager, but uh, be already uh, in the situation that you can use the Azure portal for deploying new virtual machines to avoid the step Udo described, uh, where I maybe have to recreate virtual machines to bring them fully to the Azure portal. Okay, interesting could be also to say, maybe I'm actually on another hypervisor or maybe I'm actually on Hyper-V on Windows Server and I want to migrate to Azure Stack HCI because there we have additional capabilities and there we have a new tool that maybe will show us how it would be possible to migrate workload in the future. And the interesting thing is um, we often have discussions about Hyper-V in Windows Server and Azure Stack HCI and pricing. We did a price comparison today in the uh, hybrid show and we have seen that, for example, an RDS scenario um, is um, more expensive on traditional Windows Server than an Azure Virtual Desktop scenario on Azure Stack HCI. We did a comparison with 50 users and we used the pricing that was announced yeah, two weeks ago. Uh, last week, we have the clarity where it's on the pricing website with uh, one cent per core per hour. So um, you should absolutely look at this uh, opportunity to maybe use Azure Stack HCI to be in the modern world for your workload. And if you want to move virtual machines from, um, yeah, yeah, from Hyper-V to um, Azure Stack HCI, you could use export import. Uh, so you could deploy a new Azure Stack HCI cluster and um, do everything as we described it in our previous Azure Stack HCI shows, and then just export the virtual machines and bring them to Azure Stack HCI. This is exactly the way we already had in the previous Azure Stack HCI versions. This still works. Um, important is here to know um, that these virtual machines we bring to our Azure Stack HCI cluster via export and import um, are not visible in the Azure portal by default. We can arc enable these virtual machines, then they are shown in the Azure portal, or we can use the way Udo descri described in his uh, note that we can create an empty virtual machine via the Azure portal and attach the disks. So we need some additional steps to have them visible in the uh, Azure portal. The interesting new thing is, and this is, was also announced um, two weeks ago, is to migrate virtual machines to Azure Stack HCI via Azure Migrate. Because Azure Migrate will, the migration, will be the migration tool for the future. Um, today it only supports Hyper-V. We will see this on one of the next slides, but um, this will also support VMware in the future. The preview for migrating virtual machines from Hyper-V to Azure Stack HCI 23H2 is in public preview. The uh, Azure Migrate for migrating from VMware to Azure Stack HCI is in private preview. 
And my expectation is that we also will be able to migrate VMs from an older Azure Stack HCI version to the latest Azure Stack HCI version, because this would be a great workaround for this uh, limitation, how to bring the existing virtual machines to the Azure portal. So in this scenario, we would deploy a new Azure Stack HCI cluster via the Azure portal. We discussed it in the previous scenarios. And and um, the Azure Migrate is exactly the Azure Migrate you know from migrating workloads to Azure. Um, this means we have an Azure Migrate appliance. This Azure Migrate appliance runs on the Hyper server, in the future also in VMware, maybe in the future also on another Azure Stack HCI cluster. And this Azure Migrate appliance is responsible for collecting information about the previous infrastructure or the existing infrastructure. And on the target infrastructure, on the target Azure Stack HCI cluster, we have an Azure Arc resource bridge. This is deployed by default in 23H2. And we have a target appliance um, that connects to the source appliance on the source Hyper-V server or cluster. Important today in the public preview, we have only source environments on Hyper-V. It can be Hyper-V on 2012, R2, 2016, 2019, 2022. Um, and the target environment can be Azure Stack HCI version 23H2. This is important because um, 23H2 has this new way how to handle virtual machines, to bring them automatically to the Azure portal um, or to show them in the Azure portal, to have the VM management in the Azure portal. And this is uh, handled by the Azure Migrate appliance. Uh, cool thing about this here because we don't have to think about um, how to bring the virtual machine into the Azure portal. We don't have to register it for Azure Arc manually. We don't have to use this workaround to create an empty virtual machine. Um, the exact steps are that we start in the Azure portal. So we go to the Azure portal and there's a service, it's called Azure Migrate. And it starts with the discovery and assessment of the existing environment. There we need some data we provide for the Azure Migrate appliance. So we have a subscription we use, we have a resource group, we have a uh, project and the geography. And there we can download the appliance as an virtual hard disk file or as an um, zip file. The zip file can be used to deploy the appliance on a prepared virtual machine. The download of the virtual hard disk file is the easiest way because there the virtual um, migrate appliance is already pre-configured on this machine. So in the back end, the Azure Migrate uses Hyper-V Replica. So um, from the technology perspective, virtual machines are replicated from the existing environment to the new Azure Stack HCI cluster. And um, the Azure Migrate appliance supports in discovering existing servers and workloads. This is interesting when we look uh, uh, on one of the next slides where we see that we can reconfigure the virtual machines. This is very, very important to cost optimize our whole workload we have on Azure Stack HCI. Um, from the discovered servers, we can uh, specify where to migrate to. We have as target Azure Stack HCI or Azure it can also be migrated to Azure Public Cloud. The virtualization type today available is Hyper-V. VMware will be added there. The on-premises appliance as a name. This depends on your naming conventions. 
And then we need a secret key before we started with the Azure Stack HCI shows. Ven and I talked a little bit about security and Azure Stack HCI and some customers have concerns because we have the connectivity to Azure. The important thing is that um, Azure Stack HCI is actually the most secure operating system Microsoft provides for server systems on premises because it uses the same um, security approach we have in Azure. And so nothing is um, yeah, distributed across uh, from our on-premises world to Azure without having the full focus on security. And this is the reason why we have a um, yeah, appliance key that is generated here to ensure that the whole transfer is secure. Important is that in Azure, we only store metadata about the virtual machines because the virtual machines are migrated from an old cluster to a new cluster. Uh, but for sure, some data goes to Azure and it's stored in an Azure storage account, names of my virtual machines, sizes of my virtual machines. Uh, and this is secured by this secure key here. Um, as I mentioned- I have a question yeah, sorry? about yeah. the Alliance OS. So two yeah. or three slides. It's a go. You, you, you showed that there's a wide range of operating systems that is supported for the host and for the guest. But the appliance OS is the OS where the Azure Migrate is running in, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So this is Windows Server 2022 only. So in the case the customer has an Hyper-V host uh, of Windows Server 2016, for example, and guest yeah. or with Windows Server 2016 as well. And then they have to install a Windows Server 2022 version on the uh, source environment uh, because um, this is the only OS supporting Azure Migrate. How about the licensing of this version? This is not a VM any employee uh, is accessing or any uh, tool is running except the the uh, migration tool is this something the customer needs a license for is this a scenario where no license is needed for the windows server 2022 this is an interesting question because we don't have the full information about this because today it's a preview. So today we don't have costs for it because it's a preview service. And as usual uh, in the Microsoft uh, environment, the preview services are not charged. Yeah, but um, the, the operating system is not in a preview. So Windows Server 2022 is not in a preview. This is correct, but it's provided as an appliance. So yeah. um, regarding my understanding, okay. because it's an appliance, I don't have to care about the licensing today, but um. you are uh, absolutely right. When this product is released, we should clarify if I need additional licenses for this. Um, so if you install the Azure Migrate on the source, then Windows Server is part of the installation and does not have to be installed separately? Yes, we don't have a product key for it. We don't activate ah, okay. it. So we don't access the Windows Server. The appliance is configured via a web browser. So what we see is a, uh, we launch a web browser to connect to this appliance. So I would assume that Microsoft says, okay, the OS is inside this appliance and you don't have to license it because this would okay. be absolutely then uh, potential showstopper if we are running a previous Windows Server version mm -hmm. or VMware. But we don't have a clear statement about this because it's not finally released. It's uh, oh, yeah. similar to Azure Virtual Desktop uh, last year where we didn't know what the costs will be. And so my expectation is that we don't have to have a license for this Windows Server because it's a little bit like we had the Hyper-V server in previous versions. We cannot configure a domain controller on it. We cannot use it as a file server. It's just for this migration appliance and it's pre-configured. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But we should clarify this till the tool is released if there are any uh, yeah, side effects we have to care about regarding the licensing for the appliance. I would expect 
no. Yeah. yeah. So maybe there's a cost for the Azure Migrate, then it's included. And if it's for free, I think it's included as well. Yeah. OK, thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. OK. Yeah. So the appliance is pre-configured. The appliance supports us today from Hyper-V to Azure Stack HCI. VMware is already announced. I would expect that I also can use the virtualization type Hyper-V on Azure Stack HCI. I didn't test this explicitly, but maybe this works already today because Hyper-V is in Windows Server and Hyper-V is in Azure Stack HCI. And in Azure Stack HCI 2022 H2, we have the situation that we have the same Hyper-V version we have in the actual Windows Server release. So it should work, but I didn't test this. Officially supported is Hyper-V based on Windows Server as a source and VMware will be added. I think VMware is very important because many customers are thinking to move from VMware to any option of Hyper-V today. And there's an important thing, the target is only Azure Stack HCI. So if somebody is thinking about using Azure Migrate to um, yeah, move to Hyper-V based on Windows Server, this is not uh, announced in any way for the Azure Migrate appliance. The name is Azure Migrate. So possible target environments are Azure and Azure Stack HCI version 23H2. But between Windows Server and another Windows Server, you can use live migration, don't you? We could use live migration or we could use um, the um, Hyper-V replica technology. So we yeah. don't have the, um, let's say, additional advantages like resource optimization and so on of the Azure Migrate appliance. But for sure, we have tools to move the area. Yeah, and you mentioned at the beginning that a live migration from Windows Server Hyper-V to Azure Stack HCI is not possible. And yeah. I think that includes the Azure Migrate that this is not a live migration. This is only yes. a migration tool. This is not a live migration. We will see this in the next uh, screenshots. This is a replication. Yeah, When we mm -hmm. downloaded the appliance, and this is a screenshot from the web-based portal. So this is a screenshot from within the browser. So we are only using this uh, web portal to manage this machine. So the OS inside is Windows Server, um, but the whole management is done via the web console here. So um, we connect to our existing cluster and to our new cluster. And then we can start the analysis of the environment and start the replication. And this is uh, exactly what you asked. We don't have a live migration option. We don't have a move workload online or live. We have the replication. So we replicate virtual machines from a source host to a target uh, host or from a source cluster to a target cluster. And um, for sure, we can do this um, on a VM basis. So we don't have to replicate the whole VM list on a cluster. So we can decide to uh, use, for example, virtual machine four and virtual machine five. Um, and the interesting thing in Azure Migrate is, that we can resize the virtual machines. So we can see what the actual configuration is and we can resize the virtual machine because maybe we realize that this specific machine is oversized regarding the configuration or it is was limited uh, regarding the resources we wanted to use. And so we could also increase the size. But this is the same when we migrate to Azure. There we also have this resizing step. Um, in Azure, it's very important because you know every virtual CPU, every additional gigabyte of memory um, results in costs in Azure. On Azure Stack HCI, it's additional consumption we want to avoid. And this is the reason for this optimization step here. Mm -hmm. um, 
For sure, we also can specify the disks. Maybe the virtual machine has some disks that should not be migrated with the virtual machine. So we can um, unselect or uncheck um, unneeded disks to reduce the amount of data that is transferred. And then the replication will uh, start. The initial replication for this virtual machine uh, will start and everything is monitored via the um, migrate appliance. But for sure, we see the replication status also on the source and on the target. And um, when the replication is healthy, so when the replication is finished and all the data is replicated to the new cluster, we have a migration status ready to migrate. So we could choose, okay, virtual machine, test SA now should be um, switched to the new Azure Stack HCI 23H2 cluster. And when we decide to do this switch, then we have a short downtime because the virtual machine on the source cluster will be taken offline and on the destination cluster, the virtual machine will be started. So it's not the same experience we have with the live migration, but we have a very, very small time downtime. So for the usual workloads, um, I know in the field, this would be um, okay, this would be fine for sure. If we have a workload that has to be up and running 24 seven all the time, um, this is not an, an, an valid option. No. Okay, yeah. So the interesting thing in uh, Azure Migrate is that when the migration is finished, the virtual machine is listed in the Azure portal as we expected in the virtual machine list here. So when we click on this ready to migrate button, then we will see after the migration has finished the virtual machine inside the Azure portal um, inside the virtual machines list. And this is on the next slide. So if the migration has finished, we have this virtual machine fully integrated within the resources in the Azure portal. So we don't have to manually create um, VM containers where we add virtual hard disks. We don't have to manually register them via Azure Arc. This is done by the Azure Migrate. For sure, Azure Migrate creates a new virtual machine, but if you ever create it um, with Hyper-V, a Hyper-V replica configuration, you know that the source VM will be created on the target VM and the changes on the virtual hard disk will be replicated to the new host. Okay, so Today, it's available as a public preview. You can test this. You can use this in your environment. Um, I don't know when it will be released. So it's um, announced as a preview, but available for everyone today. So it's not a private preview. When the migration has finished, we have some additional capabilities via the Azure Migrate because at a later point in time, we can decide to complete the migration to say, okay, now everything is on the target cluster. I don't need the stuff on the old cluster anymore. I really want to remove it there. So there will be not a Delta replication anymore. Azure Migrate replicates the changes as long as the migration uh, configuration exists. This is great if you have huge VMs where you have still changes on the workload on the old VM. So these changes still will be replicated to the new VM. And when you complete the migration, you can decide in the wizard if you remove the virtual machine from the old host or if you turn the virtual machine off and keep the virtual machine um, for maybe backup uh, things or um, maybe um, some testing on the old environment. Okay, so these are the scenarios um, we have today 
for migrating from existing clusters, reusing existing hardware, migrating from uh, other hypervisors or from uh, Windows Server-based Hyper-V configurations to Azure Stack HCI. So many, many options available and more to add when the official migration path is announced uh, from Microsoft. Um, so it depends on you, on your scenario, which option you will choose, which uh, the, is the scenario that fits your needs here. Perfect. Okay. At the beginning, you mentioned yeah. that when you have a source and the VM is ARC enabled and mm -hmm. you migrate it to a target, then it's not um, any longer ARC enabled. Is this different when you're using the Azure migrate or do you have to ARC enable it manually as well? Yeah, the Azure Migrate fully brings the virtual machines to the HCI cluster with the full ARC enablement. I think the oh. important thing is, and I open my Azure portal here to, to show this to you, um, that there's a difference in how these virtual machines are handled. When I go to a cluster here, I have the resources on my cluster and the challenge today is, to bring existing virtual machines to this list here, to ensure that the machine is fully listed in the virtual machine resources for the Azure Stack HCI cluster, because as we already uh, discussed in a previous Azure Stack HCI show, we have the cluster and we have the Azure Arc resource bridge on premises and every part has to know about this virtual machine. Um, Different from the listing here inside the cluster is the listing in the infrastructure. And in previous Azure Stack HCI versions, it was already possible to um, ARC enable a virtual machine. And if I ARC enable a virtual machine, the virtual machine is listed here in Azure ARC, the infrastructure in machines. But if a virtual machine on an Azure Stack HCI cluster is listed here, the virtual machine is not automatically listed in the resources because the Azure Arc does not know the relationship between the virtual machine and the cluster. And this is the important thing you, we have to keep in mind. And this is the reason why there's a workaround uh, like we had it in the chat to create a new virtual machine, an empty virtual machine via the portal and to add the existing virtual hard disk or to use Azure Migrate which uses the full stack here, does the full Azure Stack HCI capable um, ARC enablement for the virtual machine. And in previous versions of Azure Stack HCI, we had the virtual machines only listed in the infrastructure part here. Yeah. So it's a, it's a different level of ARC enablement, uh, let's say here. Um, we, we discussed this in one of the Azure ARC shows um, I'm doing with Alexander, that we have their uh, differences today and depending on the version of the ARC enablement and the Azure Stack HCI ARC integration, sometimes these differences are very huge and uh, impressive here. But the plan is that this will move together somewhere in the future but we don't know when this will happen so today we have to keep in mind uh, what we want to do with the virtual machine and if you say okay it's not important for me that the virtual machine is listed here in virtual machines resources in the cluster important is that the virtual machine is up and running then we can use every option I described here if we want to have the virtual machine here listed, like if the virtual machine would be initially created on an Azure Stack HCI 23H2 cluster via the Azure portal, then we have to use the Azure Migrate or we have to do the work allow around via the empty virtual machine where we add the existing hard disk or we have to wait for the official migration path. Perfect. So thank you, Manfred. So we are almost at the end of this show. If you have any more questions, so please type them into the chat. In the meantime, we will talk about what's next. So the next Azure Stack HCI show will be March 1st. So hopefully you will um, 
join this session as well. Looking forward to see you in two weeks, same time, same channel. And um, next week, we will have two sessions, Manfred and I, um, about unpacking the deck. So we have two very nice documents uh, we will talk about. So one is on um, next Monday, February 19th. Manfred and I have uh, my colleague Flo Fox with us. And uh, the three of us will talk about the Azure Stack HCI security book I posted um, this week in uh, LinkedIn. So this is a very nice documentation about how to secure your Azure Stack HCI environment from the hardware and software perspective. So how do these two things, hardware and software, fit together? What is the benefit and role of Azure security services? So I'm looking forward to that session next Monday, 11.30 German time. The session is in English. And next week on Thursday, the 23rd, Manfred and I will talk about the Azure Virtual Desktop um, deck. It's a level 300, so a more technical one at uh, 10 a.m. German time. We will unpack this deck as well. So if you join live this session, you can raise some questions and of course you can watch them on demand. Where you can find all the information, it's on Azure Stack HCI Tech Talk. We have Azure Stack HCI Tech Talk at the channel in LinkedIn. If you follow us there, you can find a lot of information almost every day about what's going on with Azure Hybrid. So please follow us on LinkedIn. And we have the Azure Stack HCI Tech Talk on YouTube, where you can find all or most of the videos on demand as well. Yeah, and for our German friends, we have the hybrid show every second week, always Friday, same day as the Azure Stack HCI show. This show is in German language. It's 10 a.m. in the morning, and MVPs Manfred and Eric are talking about uh, current uh, Hyper-V topics. So um, maybe in two weeks you are interested um, in watching that session as well, but it's a German one. If you are interested in not missing anything Manfred and I are doing in the Windows Business Solution Club, this includes the Azure Stack HCI show and other um, things, then of course it makes sense to, um, to um, get the um, calendar. You can insert the Windows Business Solution Club calendar in your individual calendar by typing manfredhelber.de slash calendar, and then, then you can uh, include all these sessions into your calendar and do not miss anything. But uh, most of these sessions are in German language. Yeah, that's it for today. And if you want to have a classic newsletter, manfredhelber.de slash newsletter is where you can register for um, the WBSC newsletter. That's it for today. I wish everyone a very nice uh, weekend. And as always, I hand over to Manfred and his last words for the session. Bye-bye. Yeah. Maybe we can take the last question from Robert. He asked for uh, some news we have regarding the deployment for virtual machines. And the interesting thing is the deployment wizard recognizes if you deploy on a virtual machine. So um, we have several requirements for hardware. This is correct. But if you deploy in a virtual machine, the deployment wizard recognizes, oh, this is a virtual machine. I have to handle some things different. Um, and so this will work even if we have new things there. And for sure, this will be part of my video series about Azure Stack HCI deployment, where you also will see how it works. So thank you so far for watching the Azure Stack HCI show and see you next time and maybe next week for Unpack the Deck, which are also two live sessions we will have there. Bye.